Hello, hello, hello. This is Tom from Tom and Ruth Philippine Adventures. I, uh, you know, got something to say. I always got something to say, but this right here is, is kind of really important. A couple of guys telling me uh, yesterday, one flew out of Miami and one flew out of uh, JFK out of New York. Both of them said the same thing. And I find it quite interesting that the airlines... Uh, one was taking Philippine Airlines, and the other one was taking a, uh, they're coming here, um, Eva Air. And the thing that, that they said was really interesting was that the airlines are asking, why are you leaving the USA? I got it written down, so there's reason I'm looking over here. Why are you leaving the USA? Are you leaving for business or pleasure? How long are you staying? I can see you're staying. Uh, your ticket says that you have a flight back, but are you staying for good? Or are you coming back? Now, why would they ask these questions? <clears throat> As you know, the article yesterday I put online in the community tab in Miami Beach there, they asked the questions because uh, they're looking for the safety of the citizens flying outside the United States. And so they're inquiring where are you going and what are you, what is your job? What are you going to be doing? Is it business or pleasure? Or are you just going back to the country where you were living or what ABC? So I find that quite interesting that they're starting to do that. Now, what is strange to me is that they asked them in Miami and they asked them in uh, New York. Now, the one in Miami was flying alone. He was by himself, just coming back here for uh, three or four months and then going to head back to the States and go back to work. You know, he's, he's taking a lot of time off his job there in South Beach. And he's going to go uh, over here and visit his uh, lady, his future wife, and then go back. And they're going to file for the K-1 visa. And that's the reason he's coming here to take pictures and propose and all that stuff. And he's going back to file for the K-1 visa and get that process started, however long that takes. The other one was flying with his family, uh, his wife and two sons. And they'd been in the state about states about uh, five years and hadn't been back to the Philippines. They were just coming over to Cebu to stay for a few weeks uh, as though they're headed back there because his wife has a job in nursing and he has a job uh, in a warehouse, working in a warehouse as an inventory specialist. So uh, he's saying that, I wonder why, and they were really adamant about asking him, why are you going? What reasons are you leaving? Uh, is this business or pleasure? Uh, and it really makes it kind of interesting to say yourself, I wonder why, but I think uh, really overall it's the, the overall safety of the uh, American people um, that's leaving the country. Now, they all had passports. Uh, everybody had the, uh, you know, U.S. passport, so it was okay there for them. But I wanted to talk about this. This is not going to be a long video. It's going to be like a four-minute video, but... I kind of want to bring that to everybody. Uh, if you're planning on leaving, you may get asked those questions. Of course, it's pretty easy to answer. Yeah, well, I'll be back or no, I'm going to live there full time. And if you're living there full time, uh, of course, uh, you have visa. Uh, they asked, do you have visa? Uh, and, and they said, yes. Uh, the one has a, uh, of course, uh, permanent. Uh, the one out in New York has a permanent residency visa. And they'll... Uh, they just showed that. So, always be prepared for something that the new thing is coming. New thing is, uh, the, may they do that to you? I don't know. I had to stop my video, restart it because uh, R had to leave for school. But today, I want to talk about just a little bit longer, a couple things. Uh, when you're coming here to the Philippines, should you keep your bank in USA or should you have it? here in the Philippines. And this question gets asked quite a few times to me. And then how do I get my money here? And I'm attaching to this video uh, just because. the A lot of times what happens is, uh, yes, I still have my money deposited in the States because I have control over that there. I have no control over anything here. Uh, the banking system here is, 
a lot of people don't have a problem with it, but a lot of people do have a problem with it. Uh, you're never a victim until you're a victim. And I don't want to be a victim here. I'm not saying it's like walking down the alley. It looks clean and fine. It's dark. There's no lights. But then again, too, uh, you don't know what's behind the walls. And the same thing goes with the banking here. You don't know what's going on in the banking and what's happening with the banking. And what it is, is uh, I just, just, I'll be honest. I just don't trust. I just don't trust. So I leave my bank accounts in USA and I have a USA address. The banks, uh, I just use my credit cards. Now, <clears throat> it is a pain getting my credit cards here. Now, that is that is a con for sure. Uh, I tell my bank to do it. And yes, we can. Before you know it, it takes two weeks sometimes, sometimes a lot longer. I had my brother doing it for a while, but now he doesn't want to be. He's very busy and it's over. I guess it's over his head to do it. So uh, that's something that I got to take care of. I may uh, send it to a friend, have it sent to my friend's house and have him ship it over and have him do it. And he'll gladly do that for me. I think what happens sometimes to the banking is, is never deposit your money here unless you really feel comfortable with that bank. So many guys have had that money taken out of their accounts and some, and what they do sometimes they hold on to money and use it elsewhere. Meaning um, imagine having, you know, a couple dozen foreigners, that's a lot of money coming in and then they, they'll keep the money and then use it, not use it personally, but use it as a bank. Some may use it personally, but there's so many, I, I, I couldn't even begin to tell you over a hundred, maybe 200 people have messaged me throughout the eight years I've been here. That has a nightmare with banking. So keep the bank wherever you're comfortable with, if you feel comfortable, bring it here. It's all on you. As your social security deposit here? Yes, you can. And you can get a bank card. You can open up an account. You cannot do it with a tourist visa. Some banks will accept it, but the banks that will accept it, I don't know if I would trust them. Uh, as you know, SM owns BDO and they own uh, another bank, China Bank. Uh, they're fairly decent on a scale of 1 to 10, I would say a 5 or 4. There are other banks. Philippines National Bank, other banks is probably as good. Land Bank is fairly good. I did get good response out of them when they kept my credit card, you know, in the machine. But there are certain things that you can do to keep uh, the banking in the U.S. And just, you need money, just pull it out on your card or send it in wise. I got to tell you what I just did. I just sent myself, myself, uh, $300. Instead of doing the bank, the bank transfer, I just did it because get this, I did it through wise cost me three cents. If I do it, uh, here and I go to the bank and pull it out, you know, bank to bank transfer here. And I get Ruth's got a credit card her in her name. She just goes out of the bank and pulls the money out. Well, it's five bucks. Sometimes Wells Fargo will credit me their account and other times they forget and I have to bring it to their attention. I just say it's hassle. Three cents from Wise, deposited here. And all Ruth does, I'm, I'm, what I'm saying is, is I send it through her GCash. She just pulls it out. Or PayPal, whatever. Whatever's easiest for her. She can do PayPal. She can do GCash. I can put it on her card. She can buy groceries. And she's done. She don't have to worry about it. Because it's a corporate card. It's a credit card I've had for years. So all she has to do is just... I just load it with wise and go on from there. I can do the same on the bank, but sometimes it's really weird how that works. But sometimes fees are less less for me if she pulls out the money. Now, sometimes the bank card will not work, and so she has to pull out money, and they charge $5. How banks, what they're doing is they're charging more money now. Uh, it used to be 5 bucks a pop, 250 peso. Now they're charging 8 7 $10. To pull out money so i just transfer it to wise or i just uh use my wells fargo card the one she had is has it's not a wells fargo uh that's a corporate card it's not a wells fargo card but sometimes i just transfer it that way but i want to let you know i do keep mine in the states uh you decide what you want to do i have my check deposit there that way there's no problem here there's no problem getting my check if the bank keeps my check and it doesn't i don't get it uh, like it's supposed to let me say something about this. I will say this for sure. 
if you get it first of the month or middle of the month or whatever it is, the transaction time sometimes can take an extra seven to 10 days. Where mine is deposited on the third, I usually get it the second. Sometimes I get the first, depending on the weekends. But if it's, say, a third on a Wednesday or Thursday or Friday, I'll get that check on usually Monday or Tuesday. My bank just is already automatic deposit in. They just gave me access to it if I wanted, if I, which all of us do. So where Philippines will hold it, it's called two-day, three-day period. Now, some of the guys tell me they don't hold it at all. They get a direct deposit here. It's fine. Uh, you use deposit and they just get their money out. But I tell you what, some of the banks are changing their format and how they're doing it. Guys are telling me this morning, a Bank of America, not Bank of America, BDO Bank, that they are now holding their check two, three days before they gain access. So they can't get it until this, they get theirs on a six, on a third two, and they can't get it to six, seven, and or eight. Imagine, you need the money and you can't get it. So I always suggest, always keep a couple hundred dollars back for emergency or $300 back that you gain access to. What we do, we have a stash. We usually keep, you know, uh, 10, 15,000 peso in, uh, two, three hundred dollars that if we run short, I need to pay a bill or something happens, we got it. God bless everybody. It's a long video. I'll see you guys next time.